Good morning, Dan. It's Jim. Standing here in Hopetown, where you're going to be soon. And I'm going to do a little boat training video for your vacation. This is a Yeti cooler that goes into the, in the boat. I usually take it out of the boat when we are um, out for the day doing our stuff. It takes up a lot of room in the back and it's kind of heavy. So there is another cooler in the boat, which you'll see in a minute. Um, so anyway, I recommend that you keep this larger cooler on the dock, unless you just absolutely need to have the cooler space on the boat. It just takes up quite a bit of space. Anyway, here's the boat. Uh, I've got it tied up kind of sideways on this dock because the tide goes up and down two feet during the night. So one of the things you got to be careful about is this bow pulpit right here will get you in trouble if you tie it up wrong. If you get that underneath the dock somehow, or if you know it floats around during the night and uh, gets on top of the dock and the and the tide goes down, it'll tear the boat up. So you got to be real careful on how you tie the boat up. Um, I got this tied up with these long lines on both sides here, in the back and in the front that uh, allow the boat to go up and down. So just be careful on how you tie it up to the dock over there um, when you get to your dock. This is uh, pretty much a good way to tie it up when you get to your dock. Just make sure you leave enough line for it to go up and down is the most important thing. So anyway, I'm gonna take a quick look at the boat. This cable right here, this is the cable that I use to lock the boat up. I have looped one end of the cable through the dock, kind of cinched it down, passed it back through itself so that it can be locked up. And then I'll just take, I take this, this big lock here and I'll just lock it to the T-top at night. So. You don't have to worry about anybody messing around with the boat at night and I haven't heard any stories this trip about boat problems but for the most part I'm gonna start at the front here and go over the boat real quick this is the anchor system it has a windlass this is an automatic crank that goes up takes the anchor up and down this is a little clip that goes on the anchor so when you're not using the anchor you can put the clip on it like that and you know just in case it comes loose it'll keep the anchor secure take the clip off when you're going to use the anchor so just quickly when you first get in the boat here's the other cooler you can see the uh, there's another Yeti cooler I keep right here in the front of the boat this cooler is pretty pretty good size. It's, it holds uh, 105 quarts and it's usually plenty. This this little um, hatch right here in the front of the center console is where the battery switches are. There's two battery switches right there. Uh, there's some instructions on top of the battery switch, so just read it. If you read the instructions, it'll tell you which switch goes on what number. You put one on number one and one on number two. So that will drive the batteries. There are some circuit breakers right here above the battery switches. If the circuit breaker is popped, you'll notice there's a little lever right here that comes down. Push that up and make sure that that, that puts the breaker back in. If you push the button on the breaker, it releases the breaker. So just make sure all the four breakers here for the fuses are not, you know, pushed. You don't want those to be popped. I've never really had one pop, but, you know, just in case something doesn't work on the boat, a lot of times it'll be a breaker. So, as you can see, there's a, there's a bench seat in the back of the boat here. Um, I usually leave that in the boat so people can sit back here while you're riding. Um, sometimes I have the big cooler. When the big cooler is in the boat, I have it in the back and I set it right here on the floor. 
behind the helm. Again, if you don't need that big that big cooler, I wouldn't put it in the boat because it does take up a lot of space. So, anyway, got fishing rods stored up top here. And you're probably not going to be doing a lot of fishing, but this is the main helm for the boat. So when you get in the boat, uh, usually you'll find the keys located next to the battery switches. So if you just pull the keys out, got to remember, just like you're used to, there's two keys and there's a kill switch here. Got to make sure you take this and put it on the kill switch or the engines will not start. Very simple, just turn, just turn the key, crank both motors up. They should crank up very easily. The batteries are new, engines are running really well. Make sure there's water coming out of the sides of the engines so that everything's working properly. And you're familiar with the controls, You've got two throttles. Um, one of the things you want to look at is the uh, panel here. The top row is all lighting for nav lights and whatnot. The middle row is for your washdowns and some of your bilge pump controls. You don't really need to turn any of these on. All the bilge pumps are automatic and don't really require you to touch them unless they're not working for some reason. But right now everything's working great. There is a spotlight, there's a spotlight switch here, if you turn that on and then you look above you at the console, there is a control on the side of the console here. If you push that button it will turn the spotlight on. This little toggle switch is used to control moving the spotlight around, so it does move around. And you can control moving the spotlight around at night if you need to use the spotlight. The spotlight is located up on top here, right there up on the, on the top, if you can see it. So that spotlight does spin around and you use the control on the side to do that. So just use that switch to turn that on and off. Now, as you can see on the console here, there is a large screen here and a smaller screen there. They work together. They're both Garmin screens, and what you do is you push the button on the upper right-hand corner, and you can see that the screen is starting to turn on. And it takes about, you know, 10, 20 seconds for it to boot up. But both screens turn on together. You only have to hit one power button. And once you do that, um, well, I always turn on the depth gauge power. There's one other button you want to worry about, and it's right here on the console. It's a depth on it that will turn on the bottom sounder so you can see how deep it is behind below the boat. So Anyway, if you pay close attention here for the next couple seconds, I'm going to show you how to um, quickly use the screens here for just cruising around in the boat. This is a touch screen, and what I usually do is put the main map of the Abacos on this larger screen, and I put the bottom sounder on the right screen. So you can see how deep it is over here and then you can see where you're going over here and right now you can see the boat is in the harbor if I, if I want to zoom in I can use my fingers it's a touch screen like an iPad you can see the boats parked right there at the dock in Hopetown now this is Hopetown your dock is if you follow my finger here is actually located up this canal And there's a point up in this canal right here that I have labeled with this green P. It's called Turtle Hill. That's your dock. That's where you're going to dock the boat. So when you come into the harbor, you're going to come in the harbor from down here. 
you're going to come into the harbor you go all the way through the harbor up to the canal and down to the parking spot so anyway just kind of watch for boats watch your depth finder to make sure you're not getting too shallow because there's a couple of sandbars you can see it's 5.7 feet deep right here and <clears throat> you should be fine now if for some reason this screen doesn't look like this and it looks like something different if you touch the screen it starts doing you know things that you may not want it to do you can always hit in the bottom right hand corner you can always hit the whatever button shows up here will take you back to where you were when you started so if you need to back out of something like you touch the screen by mistake or you know something happens like I just did you can just hit stop down the bottom right hand corner and that'll send you back there's also a home page if you hit home page it'll take you to this main menu and on this larger screen you can put anything on this screen that you want but I think you probably just want to put a navigation chart on here so along the right hand side you have selections you want to choose you can choose radar sonar combo screens like I can split the screen here with you know half map half bottom uh, depth finder I can do I can split the screen but usually what I'll do is I'll hit the home I'll go to charts and from the charts selection I will use the nav chart and then you know you can zoom in or out to see whatever you want to see on that nav chart that works pretty well the same menu system works over here you hit the home button you get that same menu system on this particular one I hit sonar you got the same selections that you have on both of these radar sonar charts combos what I hit on this right smaller screen is I always hit sonar and then I use the top left selection which is traditional chart so that gives me my depth this gives me my map shows me where I'm going if you use this map and zoom in close enough when you get in the area of where the reefs are located like as you can see there's lots of reefs around here just outside of Marsh Harbor there's a really good reef you can go on and right here in this area but if you zoom in you can see exactly where all the reefs are and if you use that zoom feature and stay away from all the shallow areas when you're cruising around you will very easily keep yourself out of trouble now I've moved this map around so I'm going to go to the bottom right hand corner and always hit this stop button it'll take me back to where the boat was located and that always works pretty well so anyway this video is getting pretty long so I'm going to go ahead and shut it down but um, oh one last thing right here on the console here's your radio just push the button there to power it up but right right next to the steering wheel is a is a sh toggle switch that puts the anchor up and down that is the anchor button so if I use that you can probably hear it that's actually making the anchor move up there you probably can't see that but that's what's happening I just pulled the anchor back up so we're in pretty good shape now and um, I would take some time and just kind of go around the boat and look at some things but there's also a stereo you're probably going to want to use this if you hit the um, power button this is the music if you hit the power button top left button and then you hit the mode button until on the screen you see USB I just hit it twice to get USB USB is a USB port a memory stick and I have a memory stick with a bunch of songs there's probably 300 songs on it so you can just play those songs and you can hit this random button right here number two will randomly play the songs on the on the uh, USB stick that I have plugged into the back of the uh, back of the stereo back there so anyway um, these these up here I have stored up here are the covers for the Garmin screens so when you're not using the screens you can put the covers on the screens to cover up the screens 
and uh, for the most part just keep all your switches off except the depth gauge and at night if you need the spotlight turn it on otherwise you don't really need to turn anything on except maybe your your cruising lights here which are the top two left so anyway take some time to look around the boat search through all the hatches so you can see where everything is because we, we have all our snorkel gear out here on the deck we'll put all that back in this black bag it'll, it'll be in the boat um, also in the floor here there's a hatch and there's an anchor see the anchor down in there that anchor is used for anchoring off the docks when you pull up to a dock and you need to have the nose facing the dock you put this anchor out the back and then you'll tie you know one of your dock lines tie your dock line to the dock sometimes you have to do that when you pull up to like nippers or some other dock where the parking is kind of limited so anyway just look at all these floor hatches and see what you've got you got some bumpers and some spears and you know just kinds of kind of see what your storage is situation is and uh, you'll be in good shape there's a little cubby hole down in here that you can get into um, it does lock up it's a little it's fairly spacious in here it's got it's got, it's got room to sit in there and lay down if you need to I've got fishing poles up on the ceiling you know there's some storage space around the around the sides here but for the most part that's a good place to stay dry when it rains and um, it does lock so you can close this hatch like that close this hatch like that and you can stick a key in here and turn it and it will lock this so it can be locked at night if you want to lock up any kind of materials in the boat you can do that so when you're cruising around during the day you can open this up like this there's a small latch down here at the bottom that you latch the door with so when you're cruising around put that latch on and we'll hold that door secure like that so you can ride around like that I always keep that cooler right there in the front um, one last thing when you when you're riding around in this boat um, there is a ladder that you want to be kind of careful of I have it stored right here you pull this ladder out and you put it in this bracket right here you can put it on the back of the boat it's a little bit tricky but um, see if I can show you how to do that what you do is you, you face the ladder you kind of turn it sideways you stick it in the slot and then you twist it so the ladder actually sits like that when you're cruising around and then when you get ready to go snorkeling you just kind of pick you have to pick up grab your hand pick up on the ladder and let it drop into the water so you can see it's falling and it falls down in the water like that and it floats so you don't have to worry about it getting into the prop <clears throat> but when you step on it you can use it to get in and out of the boat before you go somewhere you got to reach down here and pick it back up and keep it in that position right there when you're cruising around um, if you want if you want to take it out before you cruise around you just twist it and put it back in its spot here back of the boat. It's a nice little platform back here you can stand on. Works real well for snorkeling and diving. And you got some compartments here. You can store your fins and your gear in. There's another one here. This has a freshwater wash down. So if you go up on the console up there by the steering wheel, turn on the fresh water 
that will work this hose right here so you can wash off shampoo and on this side there is just some fishing gear and a cutting board if you're going to do any fishing if you do any fishing make sure you wash off the fishing rods with fresh water at the end of every day do not leave salt water on the rods that will deteriorate them very fast at night you want to make sure you turn off the screen turn off the depth sounder you don't want to leave that on because it'll wear the battery down and just make sure you take the keys out of the boat and lock it to the dock uh, there's a hose on this side that's blue the blue hose is fresh water there's also fresh water on the shower in the back the green hose is salt water that hose um, is going to be raw water from outside the boat you turn both those on right here on the fresh water and salt water right here you turn those on and those hoses will work you can wash down your gear wash down the boat um, clean clean the boat uh, whenever you fill the boat up with gas you want to use the right side for gas it says gas on it the water tanks on the left side left side says water so put the water in the water and the gas in the gas and uh, this fuel management gauge right here if you get the total gallons on that when the engines are running it'll show you how much fuel you have used but when you initially put fuel in the boat, like say you put 100 gallons in, if you push both of these buttons at the same time, right here, boom, you gotta press both pretty hard, that will zero out the gas gauge. Um, it'll also show you how much fuel you have right here on this gauge with a bar, so I could, you know, the bars go up when you fill it up. So anyway, you can keep track of exactly how much fuel you burn on this gauge by putting it on total mode and setting it to zero when you fill it up, then you can keep track of how much you burn. That's what I always do so I know how much I have. Anyway, all right, man, that's it. I'm running out of battery here, so we'll talk more later.